happening in Kentucky. Let's go to Oklahoma now. Schools there are closed as up to 30,000 teachers march on the state capitol. An Oklahoma teachers union rejected a $6,100 pay raise plan signed by the governor saying lawmakers have done nothing to fix overcrowding and underfunding in schools. Lilia Skulson Garcia is the president of the National Education Association is joins, joining us live now from Oklahoma City. L Lily, thank you for being with us. We mentioned the lawmakers there in Oklahoma had already passed a pay raise for teachers. Explain why that's not enough. Well, that's they they pay, they passed something and then immediately within 24 hours started doing the funding dismantling the funding so they're playing games they can't be trusted and that's the message that they sent loud and clear to Oklahoma uh, um, educators here is that it's not over till it's over and we we thought we had a deal and what do you know they say here's what we're going to give you but we're not going to fund it which would mean you'd have to lay off thousands of educators in order to fund it on the local level. So we're not playing games. This is real. And this is the result of a decade of underfunding public schools. Zero raises for these hardworking educators. In 11 years, zero raises. And we've done everything we were supposed to do. We showed up. We, we pulled out of our own pockets to give our kids things that, that uh, they weren't funded for. And now enough is enough. And now we want the legislature to do its job. Just a couple of weeks ago, we covered the teacher strikes in West Virginia, and now it's Oklahoma and Kentucky. To your point, this isn't a new issue, so why now? If it were as bad as we're hearing, why not take action sooner? You know, I think you get to this point, and it's a tipping point. We're at a moment right now where we've always been good citizens. We know how a bill becomes a law. Uh, we, we call our legislators. We invite them into schools. And we've been inviting legislators and governors in some of the most underfunded states to come in and see the results of a decade of neglecting our public schools. And they've pretty much said, yeah, keep up the good work and uh, keep filling in the hole that we, uh, that we dug for public education. There gets to a point where you say no more. This is not fair to students. This is not fair to the people that have to work two or three jobs or can't pay off their student loans for the privilege right. of being a public school teacher. And we and have so spoken. This is our moment to stand up. We have talked to teachers there in Oklahoma who say they have to work as many as six jobs just to make ends meet. That being said, Lily, how do you bring in the future generation of teachers and educators? What makes people want to become a teacher if they can't even m make a healthy living? Well, and that that is the perfect question. I wish I had a perfect answer for you. I will tell you that the public, uh, when we ask parents, do you want your child to be a public school teacher, most of them say no because we'll have to pay off their student loans. So we have seen a precipitous fall in applications in teacher colleges. And so the folks that are out here today, they're worried about who's going to take their place. So it's not just about their paycheck today. It's about the future of our profession. It's about who's going to be there for those kids uh, when we're long gone. And we feel that if we don't stand up today and say our students are worth the investment, that it's going to be too late. Lilia Galson Garcia, thank you for joining us. A show of force.